Hi, everybody. It's Jessica and Dave here, your Anderson's agronomy team. Today, we are talking about how to take corn population counts. Yeah, this plays an important role in, in several things. One of the most important roles is uh, replant decision. Right. There's a nice chart that we reference a lot. It's in the Purdue Field Guide, and that shows it's plant population versus replant date mm -hmm. and what percent yield you would get yeah. if you were to replant. Because even if you have a low population, right. um, a later planting date might uh, reduce your total yield. And so you really have to think long and hard if you're going to replant, tear up your corn and replant it. Right. At a lower population, you still might yield better. So You, you have a lot of other issues too, right. volunteer corn, mm -hmm. corn at different stages. So um, that's, that's more of a... Um, I would suggest you talk to somebody, a trusted Anderson Ag Advisor. But in all of that, population counts, that's an important piece of how to make that oh, replant absolutely. decision. absolutely. Yeah. You can't make an educated replant decision without knowing your corn population. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. And then another thing we like to look at with population counts is checking your equipment. Yeah, uh, unfortunately... Sometimes your equipment's not set up correctly, right. and um, you don't find that out until you've already planted. But you can you can adjust for next year. You adjust your equipment uh, because you don't want doubles, you don't want skips. I'd rather have a double than a skip. Right. Uh, you can't hang an ear out there with nothing. So uh, a double is always better than a skip, but uh, doubles do reduce yields. Yeah, and and waste seed. That too. Yeah. And with but seed now, is very expensive. So There's no way to figure that out if you don't go out at the end of the year or after planting, mm -hmm. not end of the year, and see how— After after yep, um, after emergence. Emergence, yeah. To see how our planters performed. Right. Um, it, there's no nothing we can really do at that point about the doubles or the skips, but it is valuable knowledge going into the next year, knowing if we need to make any adjustments to settings or servicing or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, if you have a problem, you got to find the problem first. So, And that's one of the— one of the ways to find the problem is to go out there and uh, check your population. But one of the main reasons population counts are so important is to check your starter effectiveness. This isn't quite going out and it's it's not intuitive that this is what population counts could be used for. But if you're using like a high poly or something that has a high likelihood of burning the seed, Taking population counts is a good way to know if it did. Yeah, I remember uh, I, had a, I had a client once that I would uh, argue with him every year on uh, he was just using a high poly starter in furrow, uh, mainly for the price. And uh, we went out. And the only way you're going to really figure this out is if you go out there yep. and do your population counts. And compare your planted population versus your emerged population. Yes, and he was astonished. It was a dry spring. And that's where you can get um, fouled up. And uh, we went out there and he dropped 7,000 population. That's And big that's money. not something you would necessarily see in your drive-by check. No, no, you can't, right. you don't know your population is driving by at 50 mile an hour. Right. And so, um, again, wasted seed. Right. And wasted potential because for every 1,000 uh, population that you drop, that's seven bushels. Right. And that's, and that's a lot. That's a lot. A lot of money, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, definitely another reason to take a population count. And if you're faced with one of those situations where your populations are really going down mm -hmm. compared to what you planted, you want to take a deeper look. Is it yep. your high poly starter? What's going on in your situation? And that's how insect you're going to troubleshoot to figure out, is there something I can do now? Is there something I can prepare better for next year? Or do I need to make a replant decision? So with all of that, now we know why we need to take population counts, but let's get into the how. So before we get out to the field to take a population count, there's a few things that you need in your toolbox, and one of those is a tape measure. Yeah, a good tape measure is is always something that, and a, a spade, I yeah. would say, <laughs> uh, as a, a agronomist should always have with them, um, a tape measure that measures more than, um, I always say, 20 feet. Yeah. Um, a lot of tape measures are 25 foot. So if, if you got a if you got a good tape measure, um, that's always um, a good equipment to have in your toolbox. And if you don't always, because tape measures can be so, somewhat of a hassle. Mm -hmm. If you want to get a rope and measure it out to uh, the 17 feet five inches, which we'll talk about in a minute, 
That's kind of the magic number. It is the magic number, but anything to get you to that exact distance. And as you get going and as you get used to it and get the hang of things, which it sounds more intense than it is, but the process is actually super easy. But as you get out there, you kind of get a hang of it and you know how far it is. Like you'll have your own tools of measurement. Like for me, it's 20 footsteps, heel to toe, heel to toe. And I know I've measured it how many times. Mm -hmm. And I know, Dave, you have that too. So you won't always need that exact tape measure. You won't always need that rope, just depending on your comfort level. Another thing that I always like to keep with me is a pen and paper. Yep. Um, or your phone. Yeah, I was going to say the younger generation always <laughs> likes the digital. But uh, um, something to mark down. Mm-hmm. And that way, at the end of your uh, scout, you can you can average out your numbers. So your three things that you're really going to need is your tape measure or mm-hmm. some sort of measuring instrument, yeah. your phone or something to take notes on, and then a spade even then, you can just use your boot to make a line in the dirt. Yeah, honestly, what I use the spade for is I just shove it in the ground yep. and then hook my tape measure on and yeah, run it that's back. that's a really good idea. Yeah, and so um, spades are very uh, versatile tools. Very handle, very <laughs> handy. As long as you don't leave it out there. Yeah, you can't lose it. Not very effective if you leave it no. somewhere. Now, that magic number that you were talking about, uh, 17 foot, 5 in. Um, five inches. Not to be confused with 17 and a half foot. Yeah, not to be confused with 17 and a half foot. Um, that is for 30 inch row spacing. And what that measures out to be is one thousandth of an acre. Yep. At 30 inch row spacing. And that makes for extremely easy math as we get into taking population counts. Right. So what we're going to do to take one is to go out to that field. And an important piece of this too is not to take population counts in the end rows. For a variety of reasons, mainly there's compaction, there's traffic. It's just not going to give you a good representation of the population in your field. Yeah, and 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 simply, sometimes you don't fling out the fertilizer out there. Right. It can have missed areas. So make sure you get well into the field. um, And then... um, Measure out your 17 feet 5 inches. Yep. And then within that distance, count the number of plants you have. And live plants. Yes. Yeah, uh, emerged plants that are viable at that time. Later on when we start doing um, yield checks, you always want to ca- make sure you only count the, the ear-bearing mm-hmm. stocks. So uh, in this one here, you want to make sure that the emerged plants are viable that you're going to be counting. So, for example, we have in our 17-foot, 5-inch row, we have 34 plants. Okay. So – The easy math behind this is because it's one one thousandth of Mm -hmm. an acre, we only have to multiply that number by a thousand. Don't even need a calculator. Don't even need a calculator. So that 34 is 34,000 plants. 34,000 plants. Now, if you're planting 40,000 seeds, you got a problem. Yes. If you're planting 33, then you're right on the money. Yep. So, well, you can't have a thousand more (laughs) than what you planted. So if you planted 34, then you're you're good. Yeah. Um, that this is this is really uh, a key information. It's kind of simple when you mm-hmm. think about it, but it's really key information on uh, how you're doing your planting uh, correctly, or if you mm-hmm. need to change things up next right. year. Um, obviously, you want to do this multiple times. We always say at least five times in the field. It depends on the size of the field and the area, of course, but uh, at least five randomly selected areas out there in the field, and. Um, then you want to average that number mm-hmm. uh, and come up with your average population, emerged population. Awesome. Well, that's all we have for you today. So at the end of this, I hope you guys all understand how to take population counts as well as why we want to do it. You know, replant decisions, if your equipment's working, starter efficiency, and then in general, just knowing what you have going on in your field. So if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to an Anderson's representative. You can find us at andersonsplantnutrient.com or find us on Facebook at Anderson's Plant Nutrient Agriculture. Thank you.